What's up guys, it's Airstuff FPV here with a video about my homemade lithium-ion flight packs which I'll compare to my current LiPo batteries before and after an endurance flight with the Silver Eagle homemade FPV platform. And here they are, my flight packs in 4S2P configuration. They are made with the Samsung INR21700 48G cells which have 4800 milliampars of capacity. Each cell handles 9 amps of sustained load, but that can be doubled since the packs are wired in parallel, meaning I don't have to worry about damaging cells after a 60 or so second speed climb since my UAVs take off and climb under 10 amps. With 32 of these cells, I've managed to build 4 of these packs in 2 days. The packs are heavier with an approximate 595 grams compared to the LiPo packs which are 463 grams, unlike the fact they are almost the same size. However, the energy density of the lithium-ion packs compensate for the increasing weight with an even greater increase in flying capacity. So one of these packs got fully charged and was brought to the flying field along with its test aircraft for an endurance run. And that's the Silver Eagle, a home-built 1.6 meter in wingspan pusher design that has flown exactly one hour with a LiPo battery in a previous endurance run. Its average speed and optimal conditions are 40 to 50 kilometers per hour consuming 4 to 5 amps and averages at 110 to 120 million hours per kilometer efficiency at most flights. The all-out weight is close to 1.8 kilograms with a lithium-ion pack, excluding an HD camera. It has a 600 kV motor spinning a 12x6 prop, but soon to be replaced with a 12x8 for a better performance in another endurance attempt next year. So my expectations with this UAV, which were also mentioned in a previous video, were to fly for at least 1 hour and 30 minutes and having traveled over 70 kilometers of total distance, having consumed 8,000 milliamp hours at least from the pack in optimal conditions. However, the conditions of that particular day were the opposite of optimal. The winds and gusts were between 9 and 14 miles per hour, which is beyond scale 3, which is the worst time to do an endurance run. But since it was the only time of the week that I had available, I had no choice but to fly it out anyway. So after the pre-flight checks, I started the DVR recording and took off. So here's the start of the OSD footage after takeoff. And it really started here because it seems like the DVR delayed its recording for like 2 minutes after I pressed the record button on the DVR recording, which is odd. But here it is anyway. The starting voltage before takeoff was 16.7 volts, which is 4.18 volts roughly per cell. So after takeoff, I kept the throttle a little low and started to climb up in altitude to then cruise it out back and forth. Of course, after getting comfortable in the car with the door and windows closed. There were quite a lot of moments like right here, in which the aircraft kept creeping up in altitude with just 4 amps, and sometimes with just 2.5 amps, which meant that there must have been thermals in which the plane flew into. And yes, I was aware of the altitude and descended back down when it wanted to soar way higher than I'm allowed to. So at the 1 hour mark, you'd see that the aircraft is consuming just 2.5 amps but kept piling up in altitude. And I allowed the climb in the thermals because it compensated for the waste of precious million powers which were by sink pockets that I flew into that caused me to use excessive throttle to maintain fixed altitudes. And here I was, officially flying for 1 hour and 30 minutes with my homemade VTEL pusher design in the worst conditions. And I was happy to celebrate that for a brief moment, but then I concentrated again because I started getting cautious about the battery voltage which was getting close to sink below 13 volts.
And after a total flight time of 1 hour and 42 minutes and having covered 57 kilometers of total distance travel, I landed the UAV to disarm and see the stats. And to my surprise at the flying field, the battery had drained with 7,267 milliamp hours only while I expected to have drained at least 8,000 milliamp hours out of the theoretical 9,600 on board. But the thing with lithium ion cells is that they can be discharged way lower than LiPo batteries, down to like 2.6 volts per cell. So upon reviewing the footage and statistics, is that the battery had the lowest voltage of 12.4 volts, which is 3.1 volts per cell, and that was under its load or sag, meaning it recovers back to its no load voltage when the amperage is lessened. But that was its lowest point. The battery voltage after landing stated 13.1 volts, which is an average 3.28 volts per cell, while you can take these way down to its cutoff voltage of 2.5 volts per cell, which I think I'll never have to do in my future FPV adventures. At least I hope so. But doing some quick maths on these flight numbers, I did the following. I divided 1 by the milliamp hours consumed and multiplied that with a theoretical milliamp hours on board which gives 1.32, with the decimal numbers representing how much percentage was left in the battery pack. Then I divided the cell voltage before flight by the cell voltage after flight and multiplied that with a 1.32 number, which then gives 1.68. That represents the cell voltage drop supposing the flight pack consumed all 9600 milliamp hours on board. Now, if I subtract the starting cell voltage by the calculated voltage drop of 1.68, I get 2.5, which is the cutoff voltage of these cells when the flight pack drains all 9,600 milliamp hours on board. I don't even know if this was the right approach to get to this theoretical answer, but trying to do so would be a little more complicated than I would personally like. And this is simply because if you look at the graph of lithium ions, is that their voltage drop over time seems to go exponential and not linear. So I already know this answer isn't that accurate anyway, combined with the fact that there are other factors like temperature, amperage, and internal resistance that influence its voltage drop and capacity discharge that you'll have to bring into the equation as well for an even more accurate answer. But if my calculation were accurate enough to the actual answer, which I'll not even try to get to for the time being, it'll still mean I had approximately 30% left in the battery pack, which then means I could calculate the remaining flight time and distance travel I could have got if I continued flying. So let's say I drained an additional 20% out of the pack on that flight. Well, that shows I could have flown two hours and two minutes with the battery drain at 8,720 milliamp hours and having covered over 70 kilometers of total range. And that's pretty nice if you ask me, even in these conditions. But I'm taking all of this with a grain of salt because I don't even know if my calculations were right from the beginning to get to these numbers. Which actually makes sense to me. So I might be right? I don't know. You let me know. But unlike the circumstances of the endurance flight, I was very well pleased with the result of flying over 1 hour and 42 minutes, which were beyond my expectations. And when it comes to the total distance travel, which I expected to be over 70 kilometers, but which came to be 57, I hope to see that number rise in the future when I'm attempting another endurance flight on a calmer day, hoping to hit at least 65 kilometers before considering to get down. But that is up to the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did so, please leave a like to support the channel and a comment, which is always welcome. So take care, fly safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.